Good evening. Let's uh, dive in here. Let's talk about determining the proper amount of rotation for a Y-view shoulder. Now, uh, typically, I will just rotate the patient about 45 degrees. I can use a sponge, whether uh, supine or upright. A 45-degree wedge sponge will give you that exact angle as long as the humerus is hanging straight down by the patient's side. Typically, that will cause the humerus uh, and the scapula to be rotated just enough to project it away from the ribs. In any case, though, however you choose to do yours, I really believe that you need to have a good understanding of the anatomy in both the AP and lateral positions. And let's just go over a couple of the important things here. Uh, the three major uh, pieces of anatomy here that I'm interested in in determining rotation on our Y view uh, are the humeral head, the axillary border, and the vertebral border. Those three things alone will tell you if you're rotated or not. Now, it's extremely important to note that the axillary border is going to articulate more closely with the humerus. Both are lateral to the vertebral border. And when you turn the patient, let's say we're turning this patient uh, RPO from where they are to get a Y view. If you turn the patient, the humerus is going to be closest to you uh, or more anterior and then that's going to be followed by the axillary border uh, which is closest to the humerus and then the vertebral border will be most posterior. So let's go ahead and look at our first image and that's a beautiful one. Let's call this an LPO. I'm not sure if it was upright or supine but uh, beautifully positioned. You can see separation of the scapular body from the ribs. You see a uh, humeral head right between the acromion process and the coracoid process. Let's go ahead and throw some labels up here. And the inferior angle it needs to be included as well. So this is just a great view. I think they did a good job. And just notice here that the vertebral borders and axillary borders are superimposed. And that is ideal. That's what we're shooting for for this position. Let's look at another image here. What do you think about this one? Over rotated, under rotated? Uh, I think I'm going to use the term internally rotated uh, to describe this one. And uh, just looking at this good image over here, I can tell it's more internally rotated, rotated than we need it to be. Let's take a look at the anatomy. Uh, we can identify the coracoid and acromion processes there. Look at the relationship uh, of the humeral head in comparison to those. It's a little more shifted this way. Let's take a look at the vertebral border. Remember we said the axillary border is going to... Let me see if I can minimize that a little bit here. Just get a little, little less uh, opaque here. The vertebral border is going to be posterior. Let me try to dim this out. The axillary border, which is right here, is going to be articulating with the humeral head uh, more closely. The most anterior portion of this uh, scapula is going to be the axillary border. So whatever's anterior is being projected towards the right here in this position, this is going to be internally rotated. So let's go ahead and take a look at another image. And I like to compare the images to the uh, the proper positioning whenever I do this. It's kind of a nice way to uh, just make sure that you know what you're supposed to be looking for versus what you're seeing on an image that needs to be repeated. So let's highlight some of the anatomy. In this one, this glenoid cavity right here, I don't have it labeled on any of the other diagrams, but it articulates with the humeral head. And that's how you can tell that the axillary border, it just runs right into that glenoid cavity there. So we know that the uh, more anterior piece of anatomy, the axillary border here, as well as the humeral head, is to the right of the more posterior anatomy, or the vertebral border. You can definitely see the humeral head is shifted to the right compared to the uh, great positioning over here. So anything uh, that's anterior 
going to be shifted to the patient's right here, um, it's probably going to be under rotated. So for those reasons we can determine that this is externally rotated. Well I certainly hope that these tips have uh, helped you out a little bit. Please remember to uh, subscribe, feel free to comment, and uh, check out my blog.